Hello and good evening, everyone. It's Dr. Peggy. I'm here again live with my community 31 day challenge. All right. Oh, so tonight I want to share with you concerning a topic of trust, distrust, and mistrust. All right. I am Dr. Peggy. I am your author, educator spiritual health and wellness coach, and spiritual immune system strategist, as well as speaker. And you know, when we're on these lives, we're looking at ourselves and it looks like my shoulder is, looks like one side of my shoulder is, is up and one side is down. So let me get myself together here, okay? All right, <laughs> that looks better, okay? Thank you so much for uh, joining me all of these days that I've been coming on here sharing from different topics. And today, <laughs> a funny thing happened to me. I lost my glasses. I should say I misplaced my glasses. I was not sure where they were. And I don't know if you wear glasses or if you do that. I frequently put my glasses in strange places. <laughs> and then I have to go and find them, and it takes time sometimes. I looked for 30 minutes, and then I thought, okay, there's one person who knows exactly where my glasses are, and uh, it's, it's not children because I don't have any children here, and it, it wasn't my husband. So I said, you know, Lord, you know exactly where my glasses are, so help me find my glasses. And strange thing, my husband had told me, he said, go into your office space. That's probably where they are. And that was the only place that I did not look. I looked everywhere and I said, no, I've only been in there for a few minutes. So they're not hardly in there. So I didn't bother to look, but I made a decision. I said, Lord, I'm, I'm going to go and spend some time with you praying and allow you to sh reveal to me where my glasses are. So I came into <laughs> my office space and I was uh, about to get on my knees to pray, and I saw my glasses. <laughs> yes, they were right in the space that my husband said they were, and I had looked everywhere except that space. And I said, well, you know, I came in here to pray. I'm going to pray. I'm going to spend some time with the Lord because now I need to just thank you. I need to thank you for allowing me to find my glasses so quickly after I simply asked you to do it. And as I was praying, you know, I thought about the fact that, you know, I, mis I mistrusted my own judgment as well as I mistrusted the words of my husband when he shared with me to, that I should check in this space. And I thought about that. And as I was praying, um, these two words came to me, distrust and mistrust. And I wrote them down. I said, you know, I need to look those words up. I need to see what they mean and uh, get a better understanding of uh, why do we mistrust and distrust as well as, as I was doing that, my research, I understood I needed to look up trust as well. So I looked up trust first. And of course, being that my worldview is biblical. I went to the scriptures to find out what the scripture said about distrust and mistrust and trust. And so in that process of researching, I came up with pages and pages and pages. And I thought, OK, I had better just do what I need to do and say what I need to say, because there is no way I can share all of this information and get it done. Just get it done. So I did look up the definitions of the words and the word trust. Uh, of course, is a noun and a verb, and it means uh, firm belief in the right, reliability, trust, truth, ability, or strength of someone or something. Believing in the re reliability, I'm, I'm trying to read and look at the camera, okay? Reliability, truth, ability, or strength of. And I always love to look up synonyms. So there are some synonyms for trust and they are belief, confidence, faith, freedom from suspicion or doubt, sureness, certainty, reliability, and assurance. And if you've been following me on these lives, you know that I recently did one 
on fear and faith. And I thought, okay, your fear and faith are coming up again. So they these they are connected with truth. And sure enough, as I continued to study and research, I began to see the, the connection. And <clears throat> so now I want to give you the definition of distrust. Distrust is also a noun and a verb. <laughs> and it is the feeling that someone or something cannot be relied upon. Doubt the, the honesty or reliability of, regard with suspicion. And the synonyms are mistrust, suspicion, lack of trust, lack of confidence, lack of faith, regard with suspicion, and suspect. Hmm. So then I looked up the word mistrust. And of course, it is a noun and a verb also. <laughs> and it's to be suspicious of, have no confidence in. And the synonym is to be skeptical of, be wary of, be uneasy about, have doubts about, wonder about, be leery of, question or challenge, doubt or disbelief. So we see that there are similarities between distrust and mistrust, but they are also different. And I'm not going to have time to go into all of that on tonight. All right. I am going to share uh, just a tiny bit. And so um, then I started thinking about, well, what are some reasons for distrust? And I know personally, I, I would say experience is definitely one. You um, and also learned behaviors. OK. Um, and that's just two. That's just two. But the root cause of distrust and mistrust is, guess what? Fear. Yes, fear. Back to that word. So I learned also in this process that trust and fear cannot live together. Um, fear would cast trust completely out, completely out. So here we go again. Faith, trust, fear, they are also related, all right? So if you think about some types of fear and where they would come from, and I, I think about the fact that, you know, sometimes a child learns to distrust or mistrust people because of what they hear and what they observe in their family and what they are told sometimes about individuals that, they don't know anything about. And adults, sometimes that's true with adults too. How many times have you heard someone or someone came to you and said some things about an individual that you didn't even know? You didn't even know them and you never bothered to take the time to get to know them. You began to base how you, base how you felt about them on the opinions of others and the things that were told to you. Well, children are like that as well. So, and then sometimes it, it's through uh, observations in our experiences as well. If you have uh, trusted someone and they misused your trust or they betrayed you, then from experience you learn that, you know, perhaps I do need to be careful about who I trust. Or sometimes people make an inner vow and say, I will never trust anyone again. And those types of vows will definitely need to be dealt with later on, you know, down the road. But uh, here are some types of fear that are lethal to trust. Fear of being taken advantage of. Fear of physical harm. Fear of being put in a disadvantageous position. Fear of being hurt, whether that's financially emotionally or physically, fear of insecurity, and, and I should add, fear of being hurt spiritually as well. That's what got me involved in spiritual health and wellness and spiritual immune system strategy, strategies rather, because of uh, spiritual hurt. All right, so then fear of insecurity, 
fear of loss of control. Some people want to be in control at all times. They're territorial and they're possessive. Fear of betrayal, fear of failure, fear of rejection, exclusion, or damaging your reputation, right? So, you know, some of these are normal and for some of us, some of these we do need to take into to consideration, but we also need to consider that you cannot be in a relationship, and that's what we are all about as humans. We are in relationships. So you cannot be in a trustworthy relationship if there is no trust, or if there's suspicion, or if there's fear of all of these different things. And so, therefore, understanding that they must be dealt with. They must be dealt with. However, we need to also consider, you know, what the, the Bible says uh, about these words, what the Bible says about them. We also need to take a look at scripture and understand what scripture says. And scripture tells us emphatically that we should put our trust in God. We should always put our trust in God. And um, I look at it this way. We should check things and people out with God. And if you have had an experience with someone and they um, betrayed your trust, then, you know, if there is no repentance for that, if there is uh, no acknowledgement of it or change of ways, then why would you go back and put your trust in someone who's already misused your trust? In that same process, you need to be making sure that you are a person who is trustworthy. You are, you are an individual that others can trust. Um, so working on that as well as listening to the voice of God. And I, I thought about um, a great fear of trust mistrust and distrust that is happening in our country right now and that is of this corona vaccine that is uh, being given and distributed all over the world at this time there are several people who are they mistrust the physicians and the government and they have good reason especially uh, people of color are other people who have been, uh, their, their trust has been uh, betrayed. And the, these uh, individuals did some things that were illegal, unethical in their experiments in the, over the past uh, years. The things that they did, the things that they injected people with that were, um, that actually made them sick. They didn't tell them, they didn't get their permission to do so. So yes, for some things you have a reason to distrust because uh, your trust has been betrayed, your trust has been misused. But I say uh, like this, and this is what I do. I always uh, ask God to give me discernment as it relates to who I should trust and who I should not trust. Now, I will be the first to tell you, I have not always listened to the God. To God. <laughs> I have not always listened to him and I've always ended up being hurt because I didn't listen to him. I didn't pay attention to the red flags. I didn't pay attention to, um, you know, things that were just so obvious. And, you know, I have a, I have a system. Sometimes I test people in, in unique ways. I won't share that information with you, but I'll, I'll, I'll test their trust. And, um, Sometimes I will trust people until they prove to me that they cannot be trusted. But in the process of all of that, there may be some hurt and some pain that uh, you encounter in the process of, of trusting people and not trusting people. So I don't know about you, but I trust God. I trust him. I cannot say that I've always been obedient to him. I cannot say that I've always listened to him. I cannot say that I have... Uh, taking heed to his warnings. Can't say that, but there are times now that I wish that I had. 
and I'm learning, I'm learning as I grow, I'm learning as I go to trust God, to listen to him, all right? So as it relates to uh, individuals, as it relates to this vaccine, you know, I, I will pray. I always pray and ask God, okay, is this something that I should do? Is this safe? I do that with the flu flu uh, vaccine. I don't get the flu vaccine every single year. I trust God to tell me what I need to do and when I need to do it. And if he doesn't give me peace of mind to do something, I have learned the hard way to listen to his voice. He doesn't always tell me why, but he will definitely speak and say, don't do this or do this or don't trust that or trust this. And then there are times when, you know, the Lord has caused me to feel uneasy about certain situations, certain people, uneasy, uncomfortable, you know, being around them. And then not only that, just have you ever said, I don't know what it is about that individual, but there's something there that's just not right. I've learned to listen to those feelings. I've learned to listen to the Lord when he speaks to me in that manner, because he doesn't always reveal at that time, in that moment, what it is that you need to not trust. He doesn't always reveal that at the moment, but he will always reveal it later because he is a God of his word. So as it relates to trust and um, you're looking for someone who is honest and who has integrity, someone who keeps their word and they're not belittling others, someone who admits when they are wrong and seek forgiveness, someone who's also willing to forgive others when they have done things to hurt them. And, you know, as we're looking for individuals to be trustworthy, as I said earlier, we need to make sure that we are trustworthy as well and we're doing these things. So focus on being a trust trustworthy person and I feel like you will attract people who are trustworthy. And when others come with uh, ulterior motives, the Lord will reveal it to you. And in that process, I say, Listen, listen, take heed to the Holy Spirit, or you may discover that you will be hurt in some ways or you'll be let down. But God will never hurt you when you trust him, when you put your trust in him. He'll never hurt you. He'll never let you down. And of course, Jesus is our example. The scripture tells us, and I can't remember which verse it is, it said Jesus did not trust any of them because he knew them. He knew who they were and he, he knew what was in them. We don't always know what's in someone, but we can always ask God to reveal it to us. We can always say to the Lord, speak to me concerning this situation, concerning this person. Do I need to trust this or do I not need to trust it? because we don't want to put our trust in something or something and discover that our trust has been misused or misguided at some point. All right. I would be here for hours trying to share with you because uh, there's actually 10 pages of scripture <laughs> that talk about these words, trust, distrust, and mistrust. All right. So until tomorrow, I'm Dr. Peggy, your spiritual health and wellness coach and spiritual immune system strategist, trying to help you stay spiritually healthy and well. And to do that with these three words on tonight, you must know where to put your trust and who to put your trust in. And do not feel bad or guilty when you discover that someone that you trusted cannot be trusted and you can't go and put your trust in them again. You have to wait until the Lord says this person has repented or they have come to you in repentance, all right? And uh, so remember, our examples are in the scripture 
And we don't want to lean too hard on any individual or trust them more than we trust God. We don't want to put people in a place where only God is supposed to be or expect things from individuals that our only God can do. When we do that, we have actually caused them to become an idol in our lives. And God always deal with the idols that we put up in our lives. So remember, trust, mistrust, distrust. All right. God bless you. See you tomorrow.